Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Go proverb, capture the cutting stone. So when we say capture the cutting stone, we're usually talking about a position where you have two cutting points on the second line. And so in this case, black is going to cut one of those and get something out of it. So there is some potential here for black. Just to go back a few moves, show you the joseki, this is actually something that can happen uh, from this position, where black can play an attachment on the outside. When white plays a hane, black pulls back. And white does have the option of extending, which is a different joseki. But when white plays the hane here, the idea is that white is going to capture the cutting stone. And so this is a very good example of how the proverb works. We're going to start with black cutting on the outside. And the proverb tells you that white should capture the cutting stone. So to show you how that works, white plays here. Black will use that cut to make this forcing, and black can capture the corner. So this is an even result. It is a joseki. Locally, white can continue with maybe pushing here, or white can play away. So this is an example of a ponnuki for white. And I did define a ponuki in one of my previous videos, so I'll put a link uh, probably up at the top of the screen and also in the description of the video. So you can look at that and take a look at what the value of a ponuki is. Ponukis are very valuable, so that's what white shape is here. But black has got some territory in the corner, so that's good for black also, and it's an even result. Now, if black had um, gotten the same result without cutting on the left, that would have been if black had played here and white had connected here. Then black has the same territory on the right in the corner, but white has a weak group on the left. So there's a huge difference between this group, which is eyeless and is going to be attacked later on in the game. When we compare it to, to this white group, which has an eye already with the captured stone, this group is much more strong. In fact, with this ponnuki shape here, um, we would usually say that white is pretty close to being alive already. So that's why this shape is much better than this shape for white. So let's uh, see what happens if black cuts on this side. Again, white should follow the proverb and capture the cutting stone. So white will capture here. And in this case, black does get the capture in a ladder. So assuming the latter favors black, this is going to be an even result. We do have to remember that white is going to be able to play a ladder breaking move. So sometimes if white has an effective ladder breaking move, then that can be good for white too. In general, this is a joseki. It's supposed to be an even result. Now if black gets the ladder without giving that stone in the corner, so if black uh, cuts on this side and white connects, the difference between this position and this position is that in this position, white's group in the corner is already alive. White has a two-eye shape, so even if we assume that white plays away and black captures the one stone, and white can play away again, this shape, it's just alive. It's alive as it stands. Uh, white has two eyes. Um, one might say the territory is going to be like this, eventually. Uh, territory that white has in the corner. It's a living shape. However, in this other position, the white group it will need another move to lift. So if we do the same thing here and have white play away, black captures, and white plays away again, in this case, the white group is not alive. It's already dead. So that's how it's good to capture the, uh, the cutting stone, because you at least get a good position on the side that you've captured. And in Joseki variants like this, it often leads to an even result provided you follow the proverb. And it almost always leads to a bad result if you ignore the proverb and play the opposite. So just remember to capture the cutting stone. This also affects how black plays. So if we assume that black knows the proverb also, um, black will assume that white will capture the cutting stone, and black will have to choose whether black wants the corner or black wants the outside. So if black wants the corner territory, then black would cut on the outside and would be able to get the corner when white plays correctly. 
Okay, so here we're going to look at a 3-3 point Joseki, where white can crawl and play a jump. So this is one of the new Josekis that came up. And you might notice that white has left a hole in the position. So black can push through here and has two points to cut. So again, this is a case where white is going to capture the cutting stone. So first of all, if black cuts here, then white will capture this stone. And this leads to a Joseki. So you might say it's an even result. White has a Ponuki on the outside, a good position, and black has the corner territory. And if black cuts on the other side, white does want to capture the cutting stone. So white will capture this stone, and black will capture an Aladdin. So if black has a, a favorable ladder and white has no um, good ladder breaking moves, sometimes this can be good enough for black. Although it's important to note that the group in the corner, the white group is already alive. And that's because white has captured that black stone. So for instance, if white had connected here and black had captured in the ladder, now the, the white group in the corner would not be alive. So if black plays here, this white group is going to die. So there's a very important difference between this shape and this shape, where white is alive. That's why it's good to capture the cutting stone. And if black cuts on the other side, it's not good to connect. So it's good for white to capture this stone. And so we lead to this Fergus. So again, black has to remember that. And if black wants the corner territory, black is going to cut on the outside, expecting that white will capture the cutting stone. It's often a good idea to expect your opponent to play the correct move. Okay, so having said that, I am going to show you a bit of an exception here. And the important thing about this proverb is that it's talking about a position where this cut is a double threat. So with this cut here, black is threatening to capture the white stone on the left, and also threatening to capture the corner with this cut on the right. So those are the two examples I showed you. Um, in a position where the cut is only a single threat, then you can, of course, protect against that single threat. So an example of that would be if black curls around here. This is also a Joseki variation. So white will extend, and black will still want to cut on the second line. So when black does this, this is actually a threat only towards the corner. So if white captures the black stone, like this, black will be able to capture the corner. So in this variation, the marked exchange here is good for black. I'm comparing this variation with this variation, which I told you was a Joseki. Um, there's two extra stones. So these two extra stones are actually working as a good uh, exchange for black. In this variation, black tricked white, actually. So we go back to this position here. This threat was only towards the corner. And when white connects here, black will have a lot of trouble trying to save this stone at three. In fact, uh, the Joseki sequence continues with black playing here and sacrificing that one stone. So this is another even result, actually, where white uh, did not have to capture on the left because the threat was only towards the corner. It's a very useful proverb, but you do have to remember that when this proverb is working, the cut is a double threat. It's a choice of a trade where you're going to get a position on one or the other sides. And if you're going to do that, you do want to capture the cutting stone. So that was my video about the proverb, capture the cutting stone. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you.